Well, thank you very much. Well, let's turn from that to Jordan. Let's speak to Juliette Tuma from uh, UNRWA, the agency, of course, uh, that is looking after so many of those Palestinians on the ground. Juliette, welcome again to the programme. Uh, give me your latest assessment of what it is like on the ground, what it is like for all of those people we're seeing both in the north and the south. Thanks for having me, um, Matthew. Look, uh, since uh, we've last spoken, uh, the situation has um, gotten far, far worse. In fact, uh, we are now hosting 720,000 people across the Gaza Strip in 150 UNRWA shelters. Uh, we continue to have colleagues killed. Uh, now the number is 99, 99 of our colleagues who have been killed in Gaza in the past one month alone. Um, we do not have the supplies. We have the same issue with uh, fuel shortages. Um, we are really at the bottom of the, of the barrel. You said to our producer, you've never seen Gaza in such a desperate situation. It is interesting, though, Israel's defence ministry on Tuesday said there is no lack of food, water and humanitarian supplies in Gaza. They say they are monitoring the situation every day. Yeah, look, what we do now from our team on the ground, and bear in mind, we are the largest humanitarian organisation working in Gaza. Our Commissioner General uh, was just in Gaza a few days ago, and he told us of really very, very sad and moving stories of little children coming to him, and all they were asking for was a piece of bread or a sip of water. And this is in a UN shelter where we're supposed to give uh, assistance to people who have come and sought sh shelter under our roof and under our flag, but we're not able to provide and do the very minimum as much as we would want to because we don't have the supplies or the means or the fuel. So, so Israel is simply wrong when they say there is no shoe, lack of food, water and supplies. That is simply not the case you are seeing on the ground every day. Look, Matthew, it's not the time to do tit for tat. I'm here to give you the facts uh, as the voice of the largest humanitarian agency. What we do know is that even before this war began, 1.2 million people relied on food assistance from UNRWA alone. The level of uh, poverty is uh, one of the highest in, in this region, same with unemployment. And this war has made an already very, very bad situation far, far worse. Just briefly, what could you actually do? What are you able to achieve at the moment? At the moment, we are working to provide assistance as much as possible. But to do that, we need two things. We need more supplies and fuel to come in because we've not had fuel for more than one month now. And we need a humanitarian ceasefire. Juliet Tuma, thanks so much for speaking to us uh, once again from Jordan. Uh, well,